All right, everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is probably the third time I've tried doing this video. I'm hoping that this time it works out. Um, I'm just going to do a breakdown video, so not a start from the beginning and then go towards the end kind of video. I'm just going to talk about what I had already put together, and it's going to be this scene. Um, and I put this together specifically to showcase uh, a technique of making fake trees inside of Gaia using noise and a distribution map. So, I mean, it's not an, a new technique by any means. It's been around for a while. We're, we were doing this back in like the early days of Gaia before it even became a, a public tool to use for the public, I suppose. And um, so, yeah, it's been around for a while. I just never talked about it. I haven't really showcased it in anything because I didn't have a project I was working on where I needed to have a good looking distribution map of like trees or vegetation or anything like that in the distance. And that's what this technique does for you is you might have seen it from other uh, artists or even Dax himself when he puts together uh, his scenes and he has like the fake trees made with the noise and whatnot. This is what it looks like up close. It's kind of like this. Um, you can ignore all of this right here. Um, ideally, what you would have is something like this with like um, cliffs and then trees growing on the cliffs. But I didn't do that. Um, this right here was totally all on accident. I didn't do that on purpose, but that's just kind of how it played out. But you can definitely plan for cliffs that the trees grow on so they don't go in your water or in other places that you don't want it. So I just didn't do it for this video because this video was going to be a very quick and uh, dirty video. So we're already a minute in and we haven't even talked about the build now, uh, just the technique, but let's go ahead and start breaking it down. So this is at 4K. So as I click around, it might take a little bit of time for it to build out and that's totally normal. It's fine. Don't everybody lose their cool over everything, but the mountain itself and the surrounding landscape is not the important part. I just have that in there just to showcase the technique more. So the landscape is super simple. It's just this right here. And the lakes node and this noise. That's what makes up the entirety of the landscape. So um, that's three, four, five, six, seven nodes that make up the whole landscape. It's not very much. The texturing part is a little bit more tricky um, just because I like intricate texturing. That's my favorite thing to do in Gaia is texture. So you can do this however you want, however you see fit. Uh, for your own texturing, but the process will be the same when it comes to making the trees and there might be other ways to do this But this is the way I do it and it works well for me. So this is how I'm going to continue doing it I start with the mountain and a worse lands and the reason why I went with the worse lands is because um, It creates really good surrounding landscape That's detailed and super easy. I'm using the small option on this so I'll click on and we'll get a a refresh here um, small on these structures and this is what I have I, as you can see here I didn't change anything I just went with the defaults from what I got and I just changed these structures to small and that's what I was left with next I combined them together using a max and a ratio of 72 percent I didn't use a hundred percent on this because I found that it was just a little bit too much for the mountain I didn't want all of that extra uh, peakiness that I was getting from the mountain so here's like the mountain right here and for those who don't know, everything that has this little blue dot underneath the um, node is using post-process effects. So if you see this blue dot under it, make sure that you look over at what the post-processes are that I'm using and their settings here, because I might forget to talk about those and you might not see them. And if you're following along, that might be important for your build or whatever. So if you see that little that little blue dot underneath any of the nodes, that's Gaia telling you that these post processes are being used, and then you can see the settings here. So this mountain I have uh, used a shaper on, and I took it down a little bit, um, or up to the right a little bit to make it more peaky rather than uh, bulbousy. Um, and then I clipped it, and the reason why, or clamped it, sorry, I clamped it. And the reason why I clamped it is because it was just a little bit too tall and too sharp. So um, instead of reducing the shaper, which gave me the overall shape that I wanted, I just used the clamp and I clamped it down and that reduced the, the peak a little bit more. I was still left with this right here, which I didn't like. 
<clears throat> but that's you can change the noise and get something else or you can add some other effects i didn't all i did is i combined them together the worst lands of the mountains and we were left with this and as you can see here um as if i kept my mountains uh if, if I had an edge for the mountains that hit the edge of the square here, or the bounding area, I would get a really weird clipped edge that would show up in the worst lands when I combine them together. So to get rid of that, just make sure that your edge right here in the mountain node is increased so that the mountain fits entirely inside of the bounding area. And uh, give yourself a little bit of wiggle room too. Uh, you don't need much, not as much as I have here, but that way when you combine them together using max, you're not going to get weird edges that you have to worry about eroding away or masking out. It just kind of blends all together nicely when you combine it. Now we still have a seam, so you can see here. We have a seam that kind of goes all the way around, and you can tell that there these two noises have been combined together. But that's why we have the wizard. Uh, the wizard is just erosion effects. Uh, very simple, easy to understand solutions for erosion, and I that's what I used for this case. Um, no particular reason, I just wanted to make something really quick and dirty and kind of get the point across that this is what I want and uh, Wizard worked <clears throat> really well for that. Next is Snowfall and I wasn't very particular with the Snowfall either, I just kind of randomly selected different areas and went with what I had. Um, again, the snow wasn't the main feature, but I like the way it turned out anyways. It's not what I would normally use for like a final product, I would fine tune this, probably have a couple snow nodes going on um, and then being a little bit more selective about the processing here. But again, the snow isn't the main feature, I just want it in there just so you can have a nice uh, foresty, high altitude, mountainous scene with snow on the peak still. So, And it looked good, I didn't mind it, so I just went with it. <clears throat> After that, I went with the lakes. Uh, node and that was just to implement some lakes into the scene and uh, what I did is I created a, a mask that was drawn from here up and over kind of like a uh, like a right angle and you'll see here on the mask that's what I have I just colored this in a lot and then plopped it over here colored in a little right there no rhyme or reason to it the lakes node will auto populate the lakes where it can and it makes more se mo the most sense and this is just a nice way of fine tuning it because if i didn't do this the lakes node would just be applied everywhere um even in this corner down here where i didn't want it so um that was this was the best way for me to tell the lakes node where i want water and then it just calculated the results after that so now we have some little streams and rivers going through the forests right here that end up in this lake and then over here there's another one and that is often found in a lot of places in Canada uh, or the northern United States you'll see a lot of lakes that kind of drain into their surrounding forest and there's like streams and stuff that go into another lake that's close by so I thought it looked pretty cool the lake snowed gave us these flat areas where there's no trees um, and this is important to know because um, if you try to put the trees and the noise in where you're trying to have the lakes, your your trees are going to be blue with the color of the water that you, you made or whatever color you're using for your water or whatever you're doing. And you don't want that because you want your plants to be plants and your water to be water. So um, uh, the best way to work around this uh, that I have found in my experimentation with Gaia is when you put your nose, uh, nose noise node in, uh, you're going to connect this noise to the lakes, and then you're going to take uh, a combined node, which will take the distribution map from the vegetation. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I'll come back to this. Um, you're going to take the distribution map, connect that to the second input for the combine, and then for the first, uh, primary input, you're going to connect it to the de um, or the lakes, um, the lakes mask from the lakes node, and then you're going to subtract it. And you're going to subtract 100%. Now what that'll do is it'll keep the distribution map, and then it will subtract the the water from that distribution, and then you're left with a good uh, distribution of that noise where it should be, and then flat areas where the water should be. 
That is how you want to work on that. So to break that down really quick again, the distribution map of your vegetation node or your distribution mask that you made in the data nodes, both of them will work. They do the same thing. That will be the secondary input, the input two on a combined node. And the primary input will be the lakes mask uh, right here as the primary. And then you're going to subtract it. Um, in this case, I had to swap them. So I take that back, reverse that. The distribution map will be on top, will be the first one. And then the lakes node will be the second input. I forgot that I actually swapped those inputs and I just noticed that. So, um, and if you don't want to just swap them around, you just click on the swap inputs here and it works just fine. So there's that. It'll be more important if you want separation masks, but again, you're probably not really going to need that in this particular case. But if you did need them, you could do whatever you like to do. Hitting the swap inputs is just as simple. And that's what I did here. Okay, so the texturing and the coloring is actually really easy. I'm just using a texture node and it's the default standard texture node. I didn't change anything, <clears throat> as you can see here. And then a sat map. Now, let me explain my reasoning for the sat maps that I have here. Uh, this sat map is, it's currently uh, defaulting to the noise. So let me pin this one as underlay. That way we can get past the noise real quick. This sat map I chose very specifically because it has um, at 4K, not so much, but at 1K and 2K when I was testing this out, had a lot more green variation and a lot more dirt. Um, so now that I'm actually at 4K where I didn't build it out at, at first, I would actually reduce the sat map editor right here down to more of the green or just choose something that has more green in it but similar, so something like this maybe. And um, now I'm gonna have to rebuild everything after that, so that was probably a bad move, um, but we'll deal with that. And the reason why I wanted something that was kind of like a dirt and green color is because um, I want there to be vegetation, but not fake trees still, so like grass and shrubs and stuff like that. So that's why I went with something like this. It made more sense to do that so um, we can still fake vegetation where there might be vegetation. And since it already looked good before that, I'm just gonna stick with what I had before and then I'll just build everything out as we go. It's, it won't take too long to build um, because uh, I'm, I'm rocking a 32 core Threadripper now. So update on that in the future. Uh, okay, so after that I uh, used a slope mask to select the steep areas of the mountain, these and the surrounding area as well. And this will be used for our rock. And so I used a rock map. And what that does is it breaks up that selection into finer parts that makes it look more rocky, uh, a little bit more realistic. So I went with that and this rock map connects directly into the snowfall. And then the slope goes into the mask of the rockfall uh, node. And that's how you can tell the rock map where to apply on those slopes. So it doesn't apply everywhere. <clears throat> Additionally, um, let me see what I'm doing here. So we're not quite to that one yet. So we'll just wait. For this sat map, uh, I chose a very dark color. Um, this one right here, the 420, I use this a lot for rocks. It just looks really good. And then when you combine them together, um, you'll get a good mixture of dirt and rock and then you end up with something like this. And it looks really good. I like the way these two mix together. I use this combo a lot. So 420 for the rock and then this one is 408. And these two combo together look really good in my opinion. I mean, they might not necessarily make the most logical, realistic sense because this dark rock, there'll probably be a little bit more crumbling going on that that's dark so kind of something like this makes a little sense and and uh, these darker patches maybe um, but I just like the way these two mix together really well so that's what I went with and I often do that all right so after that um, I have a height map a mask here and that's selecting the top parts of the mountain and the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm uh, selecting the slope again but this is going to be the more shallow slopes and I didn't want to select the very top part of my mountain, as you can see here. And how I'm doing that is 
this slope note, uh, this slope node here is using uh, the minimum of 16 and the maximum of 43. So I'm selecting just very shallow, flat areas and not very steep areas. And if I didn't have this height node going into the mask of the slope, it would select everything up here at the top as well. So I'm just using a height that goes into the mask input for the slope. And now I'm masking out the, the top areas of the mountain, but retaining the slope selection. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I've talked about it in other videos, but if not, join the Discord and you can ask questions in there and I'll be happy to answer them. This texture is going to be, I believe this one's the green color for the um, grass. So I have a very specific texture node here that I wanted to use. Everything's default except for the mode. The mode is set to C and that's because uh, mode C from my experimentation um, works really well at avoiding extreme areas like steep slopes and so I have a lot more control over um, where that greener vegetation is going to be applied at and that'll be on again the shallower slopes and that helps when we have these two masks right here like the slope um, but the texture breaks up the the flatness of this slope selection you see everything's really uniform the texture node retains that information with the built-in node but also has the, the slope mask and then gives variation so now when i use the sat map to bring in the vegetation you'll see it better when um, we look at the combine and this is the combine that we're using i'm using multiply because this sat map i was using was just a little bit uh too uh saturated in green like super vibrant green so i used a multiply method and about 70 percent and as you can see here because we were using the texture right here it broke up the vegetation a bit and gave us variation so it's not all just uniformed one color uh, so now we have greens and browns and darker greens and lighter greens things like that and that and you can see that in the sat map here we have some you know darker more yellowish colors like dried grass and things like that but if we didn't have that texture in here helping us out it would look pretty uniform um, so we use the selection mat or the mask on the combine goes to the slope and but that will retain the um, the randomness of the texture so that's why i did it this way so we don't have uniform colors also with it set to multiply helps bring out the underlying dirt color as well in some areas but will also let us keep like these areas where there's a lot of dirt and maybe a lot of vegetation as well and you can see even down here we have the rocks appearing here looks really good my so you can do something like a highlands kind of render right here where lots of grass and shrubs and then you can put trees in here as well looks really good anyways i'm getting uh, a little distracted let's continue at this point there's vegetation so here's the vegetation and it's really hard to see and notice where i put the vegetation because i'm using essentially the same sat map for it um, <clears throat> so when you're working with the vegetation node what I like to do is use number six because as you can see here, it gives us this really like red and pink and like orange color here. And that helps visualize where your vegetation is going to be a lot easier. So I just use that until I find the results I like using setting up the, the vegetation node. And then I just swap to the color I need for my plants. Uh, super simple. You can see the, the, the settings I'm using for the vegetation node. I'm using a very small scale a slightly larger density um, and I changed the seed around just a few times um, but the reason why I went the smaller scale is because I wanted it to be more patchy um, and it turned out to be a lot more patchy than if it was just larger um, and I increased the density because I just wanted a bit more trees make it look a little bit more thick I also incre increased the slope bottom a slight bit so that the vegetation appears on these steeper areas like right here it's still not all the way up there um, but if I increase it any more, the, the vegetation node's just a little bit jank in some ways, where if I use like the slope top, it'll appear in areas where I don't want it to appear at the top still. 
So I just increase the slope bottom the best I can to find what I want. And then I rely on, in another 3D program, the options in there to put the plants where I want them outside of the distribution map. All right, now from here it goes down to the combine for the lakes. <clears throat> but we're gonna talk about the lakes real quick. Um, so you can see here the lakes will be um, the second to last height node that we have. And you can see the options I'm using here. It's just really dependent on what you're doing. Uh, it's not going to really help me help you if I tell you uh, what to use because it's all going to be subjective to whatever it is you're working on. But uh, precipitation of 25 worked really well for what I wanted, and it gave me this result. So looked out, it looked really good. Now for the actual lakes mask, that doesn't require any auto leveling. It's just either going to be there or it's not. But the depth mask, I find if you apply an auto level to it, as you can see here, I have the depths. Uh, depths right here is going down to um, the auto level, and I'm a and I'm applying an auto level here. But you can also, you know, apply an equalize if you want. That'll make it a lot stronger of a mask. But uh, I didn't need to because the auto level worked really well after applying it and provided me a little bit more of uh, uh, a little bit more data to work with. Not a lot, but just a little bit and enough to make it noticeable. I blurred it. And the reason why I blurred it is because these are very sharp details and things underwater when they've been underwater for a very long time, they're eroded, they're crumbling, they're breaking apart. So um, you don't need very strong details under the water and so the depth mask it's nice but it's just a little bit too strong um, I don't know why it's not updating here but it's not I'm using a very small amount of blur but trust me it, it works it works fine I tried it at two I tried it at one I, it was still way too blurry at one I wanted it to be still kind of detailed but not a whole lot so it'll work I'll show you in any case um, the depths mask you, you want your deep water to obviously be more towards the middle, so like right here. So I'm using uh, number seven, and I just reversed it, and now the dark, deep water is appearing where it most likely should. Uh, you can be a little bit more precise. I'm just not being that precise, but you want the water to be kind of, um, the shallow water towards the shore is a little bit more light, and then obviously as it gets darker and darker and darker, as it gets deeper, you can kind of see it working right here. It's really light here, but then it's, you know, it starts getting a little bit darker as it gets deeper. So uh, number seven worked really well for that. Next will be the color of the top water. And this is important because this is what's going to make up the majority of the coloring on your lakes. And then when you combine them together, you're just going to have dark, a, a gradient from shallow to deep with your depths and that's what you want. You don't want your depths to color your lakes. You want your lakes to color your lakes. So I'm using uh, 106 and I just uh, set the sat map editor in a little bit towards more of this teal color. And then I combined them using multiply with a ratio of 50, what was that, 58%. So that takes the color of the teal, but also takes the depths and blends them together relatively nicely. And even at 4K, we can probably get away with blurring this a bit more. I think the change in resolution didn't quite help it. So I'm going to increase it to maybe 0.5. I think that is probably what the issue is, to be honest. It's a lot more detailed because there's a lot more detail there. <clears throat> Let's increase it to 1. Okay, yeah, that's most definitely noticeable. There we go. That might be too much. That's what it looked like more or less in the 2K build, but I think that's just a little bit too much. I'm gonna go to 0.7. And I think that'll be good. So let's go back to this combine. So as you can see here, what I was going for was details, but not very sharp, stark details. And then we combine the vegetation and the lakes together, and right here, using a blend. And then the mask, for the combine is going to the lakes right here. So uh, the reason why is because we want to tell the combine node that these lakes appear in a very specific location. 
Um, and if we don't, then we're going to get a weird mixture of color in those three corners. And we don't want that. We want it. We want what we already colored, colored, and then we want the lakes to be where the lake should be. So the combined node here, we had to tell it via this mask input that the lakes appear where this mask is. So this, the, the lakes mask goes into the mask of the combine, and then it blends together really well after that, as you can see here, very nice and detailed. And uh, we don't have underlying details that we shouldn't have and so on and so forth. So this looks, uh, this looks really good. So let's continue. Okay, so um, uh, again, uh, this is the mask options for the lakes and the distribution. We already went over this. This will tell uh, Gaia that we don't want our vegetation distribution to appear on top of our lakes. So that way when we're coloring things, we don't have green dots appearing on our lakes. But also when we use noise right here, um, we don't have trees growing in the middle of our water. So that's important. You want to make sure that you, um, you combine those masks together and then subtract them. So you get water where water is, trees where tr the ground is, or the land without water is, and so on and so forth. Now when it comes to the noise, the strength, the iterations, the method, the seed, it all comes down to whatever it is that you want. These are the um, settings that I went with, and this is what I normally go with, 25% at 20, gives me plenty of detail and it doesn't take long to build and it looks great. So that's what I went with. Super easy. It's just a noise node and that noise node is uh, attached to the lakes. So if you go down here and look, the output from the lakes goes up into the noise and then that, that mask that I told you about, combining the distribution and the lakes together, goes into the masks for the noise. So now we have this noise creating fake trees where our vegetation is. Very simple and easy and uh, quite efficient. And again, uh, the slope bottom for the vegetation, it's really hard to control. I think the vegetation node, in my opinion, my humble opinion, needs to be reworked a little bit. Um, it's a very finicky kind of node where you if you increase the chaos on it which I would like to do it just applies it everywhere even at the top altitudes or the high altitudes of your landscape and I don't want trees up there that is snow and rock and vegetation would have a hard time living up there but it applies it there anyways even when the slope top uh, is all the way down so it's just very hard to get correct all the time and I think Dax knows that, that, or Quad Spinner in general. I think everybody on the team there knows that, and there might be something in the works. I don't want to hearsay anything, but that might be something that is being updated or like enhanced, but I could be wrong. I just want to say that it's a good node, but it's just kind of hard to, to nagle. <clears throat> um, the vegetation node itself provides the coloring for the noise. So we don't have to worry about applying a set map to the noise. We're going to pin that as underlay so that we get our updated here, uh, noise here. Maybe. Yeah, this, this will just be underlay. There we go. All right. Uh, it's just so you guys know, it's been a few months since I was able to get into Gaia and build things. So. And it's super late and I'm really tired as well. Okay, so there's our noise. Uh, it's created our forest here. Uh, lots of fake trees. This will be really good when we have this mountain in the background and far away from the camera. And we don't want to waste all that re all the resources putting trees and on our landscape that's just going to be far away. So this will definitely sell the idea that this is a dense forest uh, populated with trees and other things. Um, but as you can see here, it's really uniform. It's got a lot of the same green color everywhere. So I wanted to change that. And it's the same method for uh, right here for the slope that we worked on right here. I have a purlin. And this purlin has very low scale, very small scale. As you can see the mask that it's making right here. 
and um, this area, these areas, this right here, up right here, and right here, and right here, all those areas, those are going to add a mask to another texture node. The texture node will just further break things up even more for another set map to give us variation in the tree coloring. Um, I'm using the, the same mask here that we made for the lakes and the distribution and using it as um, the mask for the purlin. That way we don't apply the purlin noise on our lakes and anywhere where the distribution or anywhere where there's not distribution. So uh, like up here on our rocks. So as you, as you can see here uh, in the texture uh, is being attached to the noise and then this purlin is being used as the mask for the texture. And that purlin will only be applied where there is distribution and not where there isn't distribution and not where there's water. That way we don't have to worry about destroying our rock walls that we made on our mountain because there's nothing growing there uh, from our distribution map, nor is there water there. So it will avoid all of that altogether. It's just going to take a minute to build because I updated things, changed things around, but you'll see here in just a second. So you can see here the mask. Uh, from the texture kind of brings in a little bit more variation kind of tones it down a bit And then the set map I chose is a darker green color than what we had before and even from here You can see there's a lot of variation in it. We have uh, striations like right here and right here and then we have some brighter more uh, Lust or luscious plants I guess right there I forgot the word for a second, but even over here we have, you know, it's a little bit uh, drier right here from uh, this area, so on and so forth. And then we combine them together in this combine. You can really see it right there. There we go. And so now we have uh, darker plants growing. I went with a darker one because it was really hard for me at the time to find a ver version of like a drier plant that I really liked. Um, but this works, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so now we have variation in the plants in some areas. And even over here, we have variation. Some are darker, some are not. And I'm using a multiply with about 75%. I can decrease that if I want to make the, um, the, com the combination uh, less stark so that the color from the vegetation node comes in a little bit more. But I like the way this looked. Um, it was dark and it looked good, and so I just went with it. But now there's variation in the, the plants themselves, uh, or quote unquote plants, the trees from the vegetation nodes. So now they're not all the same uniform color. You can use whatever you want here. That's just what I went with. The last thing after that is to combine it with the snow, and the snow should always be last. You should always combine the snow last because the last thing you want to do is get everything colored and you put your snow in at the beginning and now your snow has been taken over by plants or water or rock dirt things like that your snow should be last your mountain was there first before it snowed <laughs> that's the way i think of it um the the mountain throughout the year lost its snow and then it was the only thing there and then it had to be snowed on again so the last that will be the last thing that happens in the year is the snow will appear uh, and that's where i put the snow is the very dead last so now we have nice white snow the way it should be uh, surrounded by uh, you know a dirty mountain with rock and vegetation and again this is probably a very quick job on the the coloring of the mountain but uh, the mountain was not the main focus. It was these plants. So uh, These trees <laughs> I should say uh, let's go over here real quick and Where was it at? right here? So there's your highland kind of looking area you can really see the variation in the plants from the coloring it looks a lot better than if it was all just one color um, and then you know you can just play around with it a bit more uh, obviously this was just a quick it's 34 minutes later so it's not a quick but i explained things and i like explaining things um, but it, uh, you can definitely finesse things a little bit more the more time you put into it the better it will be this was just a quick 
and and rough way of explaining it but the the process all came together and now you're left with beautiful looking water uh fake trees for you know preserving resources for other more useful things for your scene and a mountain uh, you can do this for any type of scene that you want it doesn't have to be mountains it can be like a rocky riverbed it could be a canyon it can be a desert uh, it could be anything uh, i just chose this because it's a good go-to and it's more familiar for a lot of people um, and i like the way it looks too so here's this breakdown for you uh, also last thing uh, after the snow um, the coloring is over now you just gotta do the the rendering quote unquote rendering so the light node comes in and you just choose whatever options you want and uh, over here whatever looks good and then you uh, you're, you're you're good to go some very nice uh, ambient light coming in and the sun is starting to set and we have this beautiful mountain forest scene <clears throat> okay lots of talking lots of explaining lots of showing um, but I hope you guys grasp the concept. If you do not, uh, then please let me know in a comment in the video, or you can join the Discord. Everything will be in my link tree link. That'll be in the description. This video will also be a, um, this will be a, a time lapse, I suppose, of me building it uh, and explaining it at the same time. So it'll just. It'll be really weird for people to watch it to see it. it's already built, uh, but it'll just be this video, but me explaining it faster so people can just see the end result uh, without having to watch an, an entire almost 40 minute video. So anyways, uh, I don't beg for comments or likes or subscriptions. If you feel like I deserve it, then do whatever it is that you feel like you want to do. Uh, but I will see you guys in the next one.